The Council for Scientific and Industrial Research is a leading scientific and technology research organization that research develops, localizes and diffuses technologies to accelerate socio-economic prosperity in South Africa. This year, the CSIR is a celebrating 77 years of touching lives through innovation. Good evening, my name is Zola Shalwana. Welcome to the Friday edition of Soweto Today. Tonight, we are talking all things about science and the milestone that the CSIR has reached as well as the two-day conference that started on Wednesday and concluded on Thursday. Now, joining us in studio via Zoom is Professor Tokozani Majosi, who is the CSIR board chairperson. Sir, thank you so much for joining us and welcome to Soweto today. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Zola. We really appreciate the invitation. Good evening. Now, we, we understand that the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research is celebrating 77 years of existence of excellent work. What does this milestone, milestone rather mean for the organization? Well, it means a lot of things, uh, Zola. It is a point of self-reflection in terms of saying what has brought us here. 77 years is a long time. Uh, what have we done right? What have we learned in the last 77 years? It also uh, is a time to say, if we want to be here in the next 77 years, what do we have to do now so that those that come after us will find an organization that is sustainable well into the future? So really that is where we are at the moment. So it's really that, 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 that is basically the essence of the conference that we have. Mm -hmm. currently. Actually, as you correctly pointed out, the mm -hmm. conference started uh, on Tuesday and uh, it uh, indeed came to an end on Wednesday. It started on Wednesday, I'm sorry, and finished mm -hmm. on Thursday. So uh, you hosted a two-day um, eighth uh, biennial conference in Pretoria to evaluate um, how a research, development and in the robust South African economy. What is the significance of hosting such gatherings? It is very, very, very important that an organization like the CSIR does this, not just once, but does it on a continuous basis. We started doing this in 2008, hence the seventh biennial conference. And we have, we have this conference every second year. Mm -hmm. And the driver behind the conference really derives directly from our mandate because CSIR is tasked with uh, conducting directed research to foster scientific development and industrial development. So we have to work with industries. And uh, we've identified this vehicle, which is a conference, um, as, I, as, as I did mention, every two years, to bring together all the stakeholders. And predominant among those stakeholders are the industrial partners that work with the CSRR on a regular basis. And they, 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 this is the strategic intent behind the conference, of bringing ourselves closer to the industrial partners so that they can see what is there for us to offer to them. But it also gives us a chance to understand the industrial uh, space mm -hmm. so that we can then uh, foster our research or channel our research in the direction that is relevant to the people that we want to serve. Mm -hmm. Now, Prof, tell us about this year's theme. Um, what is it all about? And also, what was the inspiration behind it? Yeah, the theme, as you, as you saw very well, we are saying that um, we are harnessing research, development, and innovation uh, to foster a sustainable South African economy. Uh, and it, it is a very, very fundamental um, a theme in the sense that we are aware that in order to drive economy, Zola, mm -hmm. we would have to have a strong research dimension. Most of the countries that are very strong economically, the world over, invest quite significantly in research. So we've come to realize that if it's true that we are playing a role in, the, in alleviating the scourge of poverty, of unemployment, of inequality. We have to invest in research because through research, we are going to form perhaps new companies um, uh, that will employ or drive employment. Also through research, we can uh, offer competitive advantage to those industries that are already out there, grow them such that as they grow, they then employ more people. So that is the idea. So we, we've mapped here research, development, and innovation with a strong South African economy. Because we think these two are very, very related. If you want a strong economy, you must invest in research. That was the driver behind the, the theme for this year.
Mm -hmm. Now, Prof, please tell us about, um, in this year's conference, we want to know the people that you've partnered with or the names that you've partnered with, uh, both locally and internationally, and also what contribution um, did they have in this year's conference? Yeah, we've got maybe one or two. But I can tell you that we've got 115 presenters this year, uh, people that will be presenting, including companies that will also be exhibiting the work that they are doing. We've got more than 2,000 mm -hmm. attendants. So this is the, conference, the, the biggest conference of its kind in the country. In fact, all the large conglomerates that you find in this country will be at the CSR, in the, would have been at the, at the CSR on Wednesday and Thursday. So it was a very, very large conference. Mm -hmm. So well, what was different, Prof, for this year's conference compared to the other conferences that you've had? Like you've said, this, um, this conference started in 2008, and I'm sure that over the, over the years it has evolved and you've seen some developments. Tell us specifically about this one. What was different with this one? That's, that's a very important question there, Lola. What is, we can't keep on doing the same thing mm -hmm. and not uh, properly assess what we gain or how it changes us, how it changes us fundamentally. Now, to answer that question properly, I must give you just a bit of history about the organization. The organization has been evolving over the years like any living being. Mm -hmm. So we are now entering what we call the fourth phase of the organization. Mm -hmm. In the first phase, there was a strong emphasis on fundamental research. Mm -hmm. So we became um, a very, very research-driven or research-oriented organization and we were funded heavily by mm -hmm. government. Mm -hmm. In the second phase, when, we, when the economic situation did not seem to be working in our favor, there was a shift from focusing strictly on science and then doing what you would call perhaps contract research. Mm -hmm. That took us away from fundamental science steadily and we ended up finding ourselves in a situation where most of what we did was influenced directly by, was it, by, by responding to problems on the ground instead of being thought leaders and doing new things at all times. Mm -hmm. So there was nothing fundamental in science in that phase. Mm -hmm. And then we entered the third phase where we were trying to correct that shift. And unfortunately in that phase, the third phase, as we tried to correct that shift, we seem to have swung the pendulum again back to the beginning where the CSRR started, mm -hmm. where it was very much about Mm -hmm. The fourth phase that we are entering into is influenced by the strategy which was adopted by the CSRR in 2019. So that strategy is now at, at its fourth year. Okay. And the strategy is about aligning ourselves with industry. Mm -hmm. We have to Prof rebrand organization. I'm so we sorry. Have to I'm re I'm going to have to cut you short there. The conversation will obviously continue after the break. Because we're running out of time, I'm going to have to cut you short there. We'll have to take a quick ad break. Now, the CSAIR has been and continues to contribute to the growth of our country and economy at large. After the ad break, we will take a look at the role that science and innovation plays in the country's economy. Make sure that you don't go anywhere. Welcome back. You are still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. If you've just tuned in, we are celebrating the science industry today and the work that the CISIR has been doing over the years. We are still joined in studio by Professor Togozani Majosi, who's helping us reflect on the 77th year journey of the Council of Sci for Scientific and Industrial Research in South Africa. Prof, I'm sorry I had to cut you short there. We're running out of time. I actually want you to continue from where we left off. So where we left off Zola was in the fourth phase. I said that the organization has evolved over the years, taking different shapes and form, of course, responding to the circumstances of the day. Mm -hmm. So we are now entering what I would call the fourth phase. And this fourth phase is predicated on a recently adopted strategy. Uh, and I say it's recent because it was only in 2019 that we got the strategy going. So it is in its fourth year now. Um, and this strategy is really saying, how do we then align ourselves very closely to industry? Remember that I said in the third phase, mm -hmm. we found ourselves to be very much uh, concentrating on science, fundamental science. Mm -hmm. And there was a clamor, if I can call it, that a concern from the industrial partners that we seemed to have shifted a bit further from industry. But our mandate actually enjoins us to work with industries. 
So we're responding to that industry by uh, we're responding to that call by adopting the new strategy in 2019. Mm -hmm. So. You would recall that shortly after 2019, we had COVID-19. So in 2020, we had a virtual conference, which was not exactly like this. Mm -hmm. 2020 would have been the first conference like this or of, of this kind after adopting the new strategy. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that was online because of COVID or the COVID situation. So this mm -hmm. is the first conference we have in person mm -hmm. after adopting new strategy. This makes it very special then. Because mm -hmm. now we are talking to our industrial partners with a clearly defined offering, mm -hmm. which comes from our strategy. And with time, as we go through this interview, I'll tell you the pillars that mm -hmm. came from this strategy that talk directly to the CSIR mandate, that also talk directly towards South Africa and the world currently needs. There are nine of these pillars. Mm -hmm. Now, um, let's look at the challenges that we're currently having, challenges such as power outages, water cuts, climate change, and high un unemployment rate in South Africa. Those have all added enormous pressure on an already um, a volatile economy. How can the CSIR, together with R&D, play a role in co-building a capable economy through science and innovation, Prof? Yeah, in, in fact, CSIR is already playing a very big role in that regard. Uh, you would know that, uh, in fact, maybe we should have said this a bit more. Mm -hmm. We have what is called the masterclass for SMMEs in the energy sector. And what that really uh, entails is training small and medium enterprises or small, medium and micro enterprises to be part of the forthcoming energy revolution, if I can call it that. Mm -hmm. So there are problems currently which I only associate with the reasons beyond science. Mm -hmm. It is not science that brings us where we are at the moment. It is just uh, problems maybe with the availability of the fleet, the, the energy fleet at, the, at, at, at ESCOM. Mm -hmm. uh, you know that it's generators that are breaking down. This is not science. It's just about operations. Mm -hmm. But talking about science, we know the country is going to be moving strongly into renewable energy. We know that, that renewable energy is going to form a sizable part of our energy mix with everything else. Mm -hmm. So we have to prepare small, medium, micro enterprises for that era, which is not, not too far from us right now. So we established this masterclass then at the CSIR where we work with a number of SMMEs, preparing them for that new energy rollout plan. So this is one of the areas where we are embarking in terms of energy. Mm -hmm. We are also very active on water. We can't afford not to be part of the water uh, engineering or water science or water invest, uh, research. Simply because you are aware, Zola, that, uh, or you should be aware that um, South Africa is one of the driest countries in the world. Actually, mm -hmm. we rank about 38 in the world. There are about, say, 195 countries. Mm -hmm. So to rank 38 means that really we are at the uh, very critical end in terms of water shortages. Water so we are a dry country. Mm -hmm. As a result of that, then we cannot afford mm -hmm. not to invest heavily in water research. So CSIR is doing a lot of work on mm -hmm. water research as well. You mentioned climate change. Mm -hmm. We host some of the largest climate change uh, uh, researchers or uh, laboratories in the country at the moment with leading scientists, by the way, in that space. Mm -hmm. And we see climate change is still at the core of our functions going forward. Now, Prof, we do understand that the issue of power cuts has become a big threat um, to all industries. Now, how has it affected the productivity of the CSIR? No, no, it has not affected the productivity of the CSIR because we are not a manufacturing facility, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. So, so, so the, the cuts as we see them at the moment tend to be very detrimental to the manufacturing uh, facilities, mm -hmm. and they are also detrimental to the mining sector, because these are the sectors that are very strong in our economy. So mm -hmm. hampering their function um, or hampering their steady function, of course, it will have a negative impact on our economy. In as far as CSR is concerned, uh, we haven't experienced direct ne negative impact mm -hmm. from the intermittent uh, energy supply. Having said so, I must say that it comes with a lot of inconveniences mm -hmm. because, of course, when there is lack of supply, we have problems with the stop stoppages or in some of the laboratories, we have stoppages. In fact, there is not even connectivity. This conversation that I'm having with you will just break up abruptly because mm -hmm. of, uh, of the lack of connectivity. So there are a lot of inconveniences that come with the electricity shortages, particularly when they happen in this intermittent 
uh, fashion. But mm -hmm. in as far as the grand operations of the organizations are concerned, it has not been that much of an issue because mm -hmm. we are a research facility where mm -hmm. this has had serious impact as a manufacturing. Mm -hmm. Now briefly, Prof, um, throughout your journey of uh, 77 years of research, what opportunities have you identified for South African scientists to become significant players um, in the hydrogen market? Okay, yeah, we are playing a very, very, very big role. Uh, you know that um, South, I mean, CSIR has been the hub of what is called hydrogen South Africa for many years, mm -hmm. even before the adoption of the hydrogen roadmap that has just been adopted now. Mm -hmm. So the bulk of our research is really uh, on hydrogen as well. It's part of that energy future, energy revolution that I'm talking about. So mm -hmm. we've been in the space of hydrogen, not working alone, by the way, working with a lot of academic institutions, but also working with industry in developing hydrogen technology mm -hmm. from all ends of the hydrogen technology. When we look at green hydrogen, uh, when we look at fuel cells, for example, now, as you know, that these two work very closely, um, the hybrid systems, when mm -hmm. you put together the electrolyzer to produce your hydrogen that ultimately ends up in the fuel cell that gives you power. Mm -hmm. We've been working in that area now for quite some time. Particularly when you deal with uh, fuel cells, issues are catalysts. What are the best catalysts mm -hmm. that you can use in order to get power? We've been in that space now for a, a long time, mm -hmm. and the adoption of the new hydrogen block may have actually put us at the forefront mm -hmm. or put us in, in the pole position in terms of leading that kind of research. Now, Prof, the conversation is getting more interesting as we go by. We'll have to take a quick ad break. And when we get back, we will talk about the importance of collaboration and more so. Do stay with us. Welcome back. You are still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. Unfortunately, we have reached the last segment of the show and we are still shining the spotlight on the science industry and the two-day conference celebrating the work that the CSIR has been doing for the country and the rest of the world for an entire 77 years. And we are still joined via Zoom by Professor Tawazani Majosi, the CSIR board chairperson. Now, sir, it was reported that uh, the CSIR has partnered uh, with the GTA, which is a Gauteng Transport Authority, to broaden its ability to gather data on the public transport sector. How are you planning to improve the use of public transport as well as um, the quality thereof and the grow of the public transport industry in the near future? Indeed. So we, we are very much uh, involved in uh, mobility. In fact, early on when I mentioned um, the nine pillars, one of them is smart mobility. And it is around those lines that we are uh, uh, partnering with GTA. <clears throat> the idea mm -hmm. behind it really is to make sure that we understand the movement patterns first of the people. So it's premised on data analytics to make sure that, or data analysis, to make sure that we understand the moving patterns of people. That allows us then to plan accordingly in terms of logistics. Uh, if we have to deploy, for example, um, uh, the transportation fleet, buses, trains, Texas, mm -hmm. how do you deploy this uh, based on the mobility of the population in any given area? So that is the idea behind this uh, the, this collaboration with GTA. Mm -hmm. But as you know, you touched on, on, on a very, very, very important aspect here, which is <coughs> collaboration. Mm -hmm. And if at all possible, I'd like to be given a bit of yardage around that in terms of how we see collaboration in general, not mm -hmm. just with GTA, um, within the organization. Mm -hmm. Now, that strategy that I've mentioned to you, that we adopted in 2019, uh, led to us looking very strongly at, of course, it, there was a vision first before the strategy. And then based on that, we had to then look at our values very closely. What we'd be doing on an ongoing basis, on a daily basis as an organization, so that we give life to that vision or that strategy. And mm -hmm. if you look at our values, one of them is excellence. The other one is people-centered people organization. The other one is, of course, integrity, because mm -hmm. we believe that in all our, our, our operations, we must espouse that value. And then lastly, it is exactly what you're talking about now, which is collaboration. So collaboration is really at the heart of everything that we're doing. We collaborate here with the government entities, and there, the reason that should be your GTA will be in that cohort. There, we are looking at supporting the capable state. Mm -hmm. Because also, in our mandate is to support a capable state. So, we work closely with government entities or government departments mm -hmm. to make sure that we offer our scientific know how to 
bring about prosperity and growth as a country. Mm -hmm. We also collaborate with academia, mm -hmm. as you know, because there's a lot of research that is happening in academia. In fact, there is a continuous kind of a connection between us and academia, mm -hmm. because some of the work that is happening in the academic space fits into the work that is happening at CSR and vice versa. Mm -hmm. We also no. then collaborate with industry. So there are three mm -hmm. uh, pillars of our collaboration. Now, um, Prof, after what, uh, after what we've said on the first segment and the second segment of the show, would you say that you're proud enough to say that you've contributed a lot in the South African science industry through your research in the past seven de decades as CSIR? Certainly, certainly. This organization has lived up to its mandates. This organization has lived up to South Africans' uh, South Africans' uh, 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 expectations. That's the way. So, so, so I strongly believe that we've lived to our expectations. Mm -hmm. uh, we've done everything uh, by the book, and uh, mm -hmm. it is for that reason that this organization has survived for seventy-seven years, all at all times, hitting mm -hmm. hard where it matters most. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've heard a lot about a number of entities. Uh, the so-called SOEs or state-owned entities, mm -hmm. sometimes for very bad reasons, but you've, ha you've hardly heard anything of that kind about the CSR. It's always for the good reasons. So we've really lived up to what the South Africans expected us to do from mm -hmm. the birth of the organization in 1945. Mm -hmm. Now, Prof, uh, there are people that uh, want to find themselves in this industry, in the science industry, as students to be precise. What courses they can enroll for and also what are the expectations that they can look forward to briefly? Yes, indeed. So, so we, it's a scientific organization. But remember that uh, to drive science, you also need support. So we do have people that um, come from, say, uh, accountancy. Uh, those are the people who will drive our finances. We have people at the CSR who come from law, who drive our legal department. This is support. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got people from HR, really, who look at personnel. We have the national department. So we have that as well as the support structure. But in the main, CSR is a scientific organization. Mm -hmm. So we look for people that are in the, uh, what I call natural sciences, people who measure in physics, who measure in chemistry, who measure in mathematics. And of course, going forward, also now we have new areas that were not there before, uh, your data analytics, your AI and the like. That is the caliber of individuals that we look for. But also, as we begin to come close to industry, we have to look for applications of those technologies. That's where engineering comes in. So mm -hmm. we, in essence, look for engineers mm -hmm. and scientists. Mm -hmm. Hence the uh, name CSIR. So we are scientific organization. So the core of our business is SET. Mm -hmm. which is science, engineering, and technology. Mm -hmm. Now, Prof, I want you to take us to the future of the CS, um, CSIR. What is the future looking like? What should we expect? Briefly, I'm literally giving you a minute for this. Perfect, Zora. Thanks for the minute. Mm -hmm. um, looking into the future, we have to continue doing what we are doing, but doing, only, doing it only better. Mm -hmm. So we have to continue working closely with industry. We have to form as many new industries as possible by working closely with the small, medium, uh, micro, and um, sorry, uh, uh, small, medium, and micro enterprises, uh, forging a, a, a strong collaboration with um, young entrepreneurs who will obviously enter into the market. And by so doing, we employ more and more people. That is one avenue that we must harness or mm hone -hmm. our skills in. The other one is really, as I told you, mm -hmm. work closely much more closely with the industrial, major industrial conglomerates, mm -hmm. your Unilever's of this world, your mm -hmm. Sassol's of this world, your Johnson & Johnson's of this world. These are established uh, enter uh, enterprises, mm -hmm. which I strongly believe we have to bring even closer to the CSIR and demonstrate to them what we can offer in terms of giving them the competitive advantage. And by so doing, we allow them to invest heavily in research in South Africa mm -hmm. because most of them are not doing that at the moment. Prof, thank you so much for gracing us with your presence. We really appreciate your time. Thank you very much, Zola. This was good. Thank you very much.
Good really do hope that people have taken some notes, especially people that see themselves as future scientists. Now that was Professor Togozani Majosi, who is the board chairperson of the CSIR, talking to us about the amazing work they have done in the science industry since their inception 77 years ago. The two-day conference that they held this week and also painting us a picture of how the future plans look like. Well, that's how we wrap up today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you, so please feel free to talk to us about the show by simply sending us an email on Soweto Today at SowetoTV.co.za. Alternatively, you can contact us on 011-933-3000. From myself and the rest of the team, we will see you on the next news bulletin that's coming right after this. So, goodbye for now.